Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, and I'm going to be reading verses 19 through 31. And this is what it says. There was a certain rich man who clothed himself in purple and fine linen, who feasted luxuriously every day. At his gate lay a certain poor man named Lazarus, who was covered with sores. Lazarus longed to eat the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Instead, dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. While being tormented in the place of the dead, he looked up and saw Abraham at a distance with Lazarus at his side. He shouted, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool off my tongue because I'm suffering in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, Remember that during your lifetime you received good things, whereas Lazarus received terrible things. Now Lazarus is being comforted and you are in great pain. Moreover, a great crevasse has been fixed between us and you. Those who wish to cross over from here to you cannot. Neither can anyone cross over from there to us. The rich man said, then I beg you, Father, send Lazarus to my father's house. I have five brothers. He needs to warn them so that they don't come to this place of agony. Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets. They must listen to them. The rich man said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone from the dead goes to them, they will change their hearts and lives. Abraham said, if they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone rises from the dead. Pray with me. Jesus, you rose from the dead, and you're here among us now. May we never take for granted your presence here. And with the power of your Spirit, give us eyes that see and ears that hear. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. When I was in college, I had a good friend named Billy. Billy was... A blast to be around. He could tell some of the best stories ever. And it was a lot of fun. A good guy. A real good guy. Well, <laughs> he used to tell one type of story that wasn't really funny at all. Uh, he'd tell a story like it was going to be a, a, a big laugh. But he'd end the story by saying, and my father came home drunk and punted me across the room. And he would laugh. But the story really, more than anything else, it was just awkward and I remember one time it was spring break and there were a bunch of us standing around the fire and counting stars swapping stories that kind of thing and and he told one of his drunk daddy stories he got to the end of it and said and my father came home drunk and punted me across the room and he laughed and laughed nobody else did and then it the end of the story, things got kind of quiet. And in a soft voice, he said, you know, if God came to my father the way that he did Paul, 
Maybe he'd quit beating on my family. And I got to thinking about it. You know the story of Paul. Actually, it's the story of Saul. He was Saul at the time. Saul was persecuting the church. The story's in the book of Acts. And he was locking up Christians in prison. He was making sure they were beaten. Not only that, and in Acts chapter 7, that Paul is holding the coats of people who are hurling boulders at a Christian named Stephen. And they kill Stephen. That Paul is an, a Saul is an accessory to murder. And it's just a, a, a chapter later that Saul's walking down the road to Damascus. And there's this, this blinding light and this voice that comes out of heaven. And it says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul says, who are you? And he says, Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Well, do you think that Saul changed? Well, yeah, he changed quite a bit. As a matter of fact, he changed so much that he changed his name to Paul. And Paul wrote more books of the Bible than anyone else. That's the kind of, that's the kind of change that, that, that Billy was talking about. You know, if, if God kind of stepped up his game like, like he did with, with Saul, you know, and there was a blinding light and a booming voice that came out of heaven, I think people would behave. I think his father might have behaved. I think he had a point there. Or if it was like Moses, you know, and there was this, this burning bush and a voice coming from a, a bush that was burning and not being consumed. I think people would behave. At least they drive a little better. Things would change. I, I think Billy had a point there. A few more blinding lights and booming voices and burning bushes might, well, they just might make everything a little better. Did you know Jesus tells a story about that? It's the story we read this morning. And the story we read this morning says that there was a certain rich man. Jesus is telling this story and he says there was a, a certain rich man who clothed himself in purple and fine linen. What in the world does that mean? It means he didn't have just one nice suit. It means he had a fine suit for every day of the week. And it goes on to say that he feasted luxuriously every day. That means he didn't just eat steak every once in a while. He had steak and eggs for breakfast, steak and mushrooms for lunch, and steak tartare for supper. I mean, he, he had steak any time he wanted. Well, it also says that there was a poor man at the end of his driveway. The man's name was Lazarus. And Lazarus didn't have suits. Instead of suits, he had sores. And Jesus, in telling this story, says, and the dogs licked the sores. That's, that's pretty graphic, isn't it? Well, he didn't want steak. He didn't want to go wagyu crazy or anything like that. He just, he just wanted a, a mushroom to fall off. He wanted the gristle. He, he wanted just a, a little something that would fall off the table. He didn't get that either. Well, he died, and when he died... Jesus telling the story says he went to Abraham's side. Now, where in the world is Abraham's side? Well, the Jews had this, this very, very rich vision of what happened when you died. They didn't know the, you know, the furniture in heaven or the paint colors in paradise, that kind of thing. But what they, they did figure is that Abraham was the father of the faith. That it was Abraham who listened to God in the everyday, in the ordinary. That it was Abraham when God said, go, Abraham went. It was Abraham that was known as the, the father of the faith. It was Abraham who was known as a, a friend of God. And that if you were a friend of God, that wherever it was that Abraham went when he died, that's where you'd be too. Well, Lazarus isn't just in the general vicinity. Lazarus is right next to his side. And it's Abraham who is tending to the sores of Lazarus. Well, Jesus then says that the, the rich man died. And it says that he went to the, the place of the dead. 
Well, some of your Bibles may have translated that as Hades. Others may have translated it as hell. And still others might have translated it as Gehenna. Now, Gehenna is, is what the, the Jews called it. That Gehenna was a, a, a word play on Hinnom, which was the valley below Jerusalem. And in a word, the valley below Jerusalem was the dump. That was where, if you had a dead donkey, you'd just push it off the hill and down into the valley. And they, they'd, 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 they'd burn it. It'd rot. That's where the sewage went. That's where the garbage went. It was the dump. It was the nasty place. And they figured if you weren't a friend of God, if you didn't lean on him, if you didn't trust him, if you didn't rely on him, instead, if you were an enemy of God, that's where you went. Some place where every breath burned your throat. And every time you, you opened your eyes, they would sting and burn. It was the nastiest place anybody could imagine. And that's where the rich man was. Well, he didn't quite realize that that's where he was because he, he looked over and he saw Lazarus. And he, he well, he kind of looked through Lazarus and he saw Abraham. And he, he still thought he was in the given orders business. And he says, hey, Abraham, send your boy Lazarus to, to bring me some water. It sure is hot over here. And that's when Abraham says, there's this crevasse between us and you. And even if Lazarus wanted to go over there, he can't. And by the way, even if you wanted to come over here, you can't. <laughs> well, that's when he realizes where he is. And when he realizes where he is, he says, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, send, send your boy Lazarus. Send him back to my father's house. I have five brothers. And warn them they will change if, if, if Lazarus goes back and tells them about the torment here. Now, do you hear the request? Do you hear what the request is? It's, give them a blinding light. Give them a booming voice. Give them a burning bush. Give them something that's just too big to ignore. Paint them into a corner. Make it. Make it where they have to behave without belief. Make it where they, they change without being a friend of God. Well, Jesus doesn't end the story right there. That Jesus goes on to say, they have Moses and the prophets. Who in the world is Moses and the prophets? Well, Moses, tradition says, wrote the first five books of the Bible. Well, sometimes they didn't call them the first five books of the Bible. Sometimes they just called them Moses. And everybody knew that. And that was, those were the first five books of the Bible. The prophets, those were the four major 12 minor prophets of the Old Testament. Jesus says, they have the Bible. Let them listen. Let them listen. And that's when the, the rich man protests even more. He says, no, 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 no. But if someone goes from the dead to them, they will change their hearts and their lives. And then... Abraham said, if they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if someone rises from the dead. Neither will they be persuaded if someone rises from the dead. In this story, Jesus is, is obviously pointing to himself, pointing to the resurrection. That it's Jesus who says, all of Scripture bears witness to me. It's Jesus who says, Moses wrote of me. That Jesus is the fire and behavior is the light. Jesus is the fire and, and love is the heat. And the request is, is, is give, me, give me light, give me heat without the fire. Give me change without a changed heart. Give me, give me good without God. Give me love without the Lord. 
change my family, change my friends, change my country, change me, but do it without Jesus. Jesus is the hope of the world. And here in worship, here in worship, we come to get the the vision of Jesus, not just good behavior. That Jesus is the the fire and the the behavior is the light. That's here in worship, we come to get a, a vision of Jesus. That Jesus is the fire and love is the heat. That Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. Jesus is the beginning and the end. Jesus is the fire and it's the light and it's the heat that, that follow. We live in a world right now that doesn't mind the light and the heat so much, but Jesus they could do without. It's here in worship. It's here in worship that we meet the risen Christ. Not just after we die, but before that happens. And in the power of His Holy Spirit, He helps us hear. Hear Moses and the prophets. Hear that all of Scripture bears witness to Jesus. Hear that Moses wrote of Jesus to recognize His voice. And to know that transformation. This morning, it may be that you've been standing by the fire for a while. You've known the the light. You've known the heat. At least from a distance, but you've not known Jesus. And this day, that you can feel his nudge. You can feel... Maybe, maybe a shake. And that you hear, you hear him calling your name. Because that change that you've, you've always wanted, well, it, it never has stuck. The eyes that, that love rather than come out with, the, with, with words of contempt, that, that love hasn't stuck. And that this morning that, that your desire, your desire, maybe for the first time, is a life with Jesus. Well, I want to pray with you. Pray with me now. Jesus, this day is your day. May we never take it for granted. But here, here in worship, you provide space, space enough where we might hear your voice. Space enough where we might see your hands and power, power through your Holy Spirit that we might respond with with changed lives. You offer it here. Here, you are the hope of the world. Breathe on us now the strength of your power. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, Just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, Thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. 
Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image. He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.